With 252 horsepower out of the box, the Focus ST is an excellent performance value. But like any other member of the EcoBoost engine family, the 2 liter under the hood of the Focus can definitely benefit from performance enhancements. Now today we've got Brad here from JMS and help us install their Boost Max and take this car up another notch. What's the Boost Max going to do for our Focus? Well, the Boost Max is basically designed to add horsepower and add torque uh, seamlessly. It's designed to work with the factory control system, so additional fuel, additional spark, additional timing, it's all controlled by the factory computer with no ECU to Required. Okay, and this is in-car adjustable? This is in-car adjustable, so it comes with an adjustment knob that has a range of zero to 100% increase, so okay. zero is stock, 100% increase is an additional four to five pounds of boost. What kind of horsepower are you going to see with those kind of gains? Well, at the tires, you're probably going to be expecting 20, 25 horsepower, 25 to 30 foot-pounds of torque. Okay, and what about those worried about their warranty? Uh, well, fortunately with a product like this, because it's plug and play, uh, it doesn't leave any type of a footprint or a trace in the ECU, so warranty is not an issue. You can easily install the product, easily remove the product before you take it into the dealer for normal warranty service. Excellent. Let's get started with the installation. We begin installation by removing the battery cover so we can disconnect the battery, then removing the intake cover. I'm going to grab the Boost Max and the harness. The first thing we can connect is going to say map to our map sensor. The map sensor is going to be right here in front of the plastic intake manifold. I'm going to carefully disconnect the map sensor. I need to plug in the connectors from the Boost Max. Now the next wire says TIP. Now this is turbo inlet pressure. This is going to be on this car, going to be on the intercooler all the way over on the passenger side at the bottom. So we'll have to go underneath the car. What we're going to do here, though, is kind of sort of fish this down there so we have it in the neighborhood of where we're going to be. Actually, look right behind the headlight. You look straight down, you'll see the hose and a hose clamp, and it's right down there. Get to the tip sensor, we're just going to remove these two screws over here. You can remove this whole piece if you want to. If you actually just remove these two, you can pull this down enough to get up in there and disconnect the sensor. We got our harness fish down. If you look and follow all those yellow wires with the tape, that is the actual tip plug right there. Now we're going to reach up in there and disconnect that. Okay, plug in the JMS harness. And this gets plugged back into the factory sensor. Okay, then lock down the red tab. We're gonna have to fish the control wire through the firewall and get it over to the pedal. The easiest way is on the passenger side. There is one grommet, probably the only one in the entire car. The way you get to it is remove the glove box and go in behind it. We'll start with these two screws underneath. Basically, gonna pull this weather stripping back. One right here underneath this panel. Now, the last two are way up inside here. There's no way for the camera to see them, though. There's one on this side, one on that side. Once you remove them, there's just clips, and it'll pop right out. Now, this is gonna be a two person job. Basically, right underneath here, you'll see the rubber grommet. What you'll want to do is from under the engine bay, have somebody use a large screwdriver, pick, whatever you have. We're going to put a hole right up in the top section here so we can get our wiring harness through. Send it. Please don't stab me. Push, you're through. We'll fish our wiring harness right through there. And now again, using two people, we're going to fish the wire through from the engine bay through the grommet. This part will be difficult to show, so we're just going to explain what we did here. Once you get the wire through the firewall over the fuses and wiring over there, you can fish over, 
connect to this harness here, which will connect to the gas pedal on the other side and also connect to our controller. What we did was just pull this panel back and fish the wire over. Just make sure it's clear and out of the way of everything. So we have one more connection to make inside at the gas pedal. While Brendan's in there cleaning up the wiring, putting the glove box and stuff back together, I'm gonna connect power and hook it up right here to this stud. So what we're going to do now is remove the plug from the top of our throttle pedal, take the harness provided by JMS and put it between the two. We fish the wire up for the controller. We're just going to put it actually just right here in the corner of the dash. Make sure it's out of the way of everything. And go back through, make sure all your wires are safely out of the way, reconnect your battery, and your installation's finished. All right, so now the installation's complete. Tell us a little bit more about that controller on the dash. Now, does he want to run this at 100 all the time? Can he turn it down? You know, what's the value of turning that knob and adjusting it? Well, the, the cool thing is you can turn it up, up and down. So uh, zero is stock boost, 100% is an additional four to five pounds of boost. Um, and obviously 93 octane all the time if you're out of zero. If you're running it at 100%, you would want to run 93 octane all okay. the time. If you're running a lower octane fuel, then you want to back it off 10 or 15% for 91, another 20, 30% okay. for 87 octane. So to be safe, run 93 octane if you want to make any power with your Focus SE, which is the way the stock tune was anyway. Exactly. This thing would pull so much timing with 87 and it was a joke. Yeah, and at 93 octane with the knob turned up to say 50 or 60%, you'll actually pick up one to two miles per gallon in fuel economy. So okay. that helps if you're driving on. Perfect. As far as the installation goes, this one is a little harder than some of the JMS products we've done. Getting the wire to the interior is time consuming, it's challenging. Give yourself about two to three hours minimum for this install, but we'll be back on the road in no time.